Dr. Bones. Today I'm going to be talking about the physics of tennis. Got my tennis ball, I got my tennis racket. Going to be talking about characteristics of the tennis ball, of the tennis racket, and how to use physics to better your game. Later in another segment I'll be talking about a game I like to play called Two Racket Tennis. Sounds kind of crazy, and it is, but I'm pretty good at it and I think I might even convince a few of you crazies out there to take a look. By the way, physics is kind of crazy, so you'll have to forgive me for being a physics professor. All right, so let's start with the tennis ball. The tennis ball, well, it has to bounce. If you have a tennis ball that's right out of the package, you're probably going to get a pretty good bounce. Over time, it loses some of its elasticity and it kind of dies out. Probably got a really beat up old one here. Let's see what happens. Eh, pretty much the same. There's a term called the coefficient of restitution, or COR, and it refers to, for example, if I, here's my ruler, if I drop a ball, there's a velocity downward, there's a velocity upward. And you can take the ratio of the two velocities, meaning the speed or velocity up versus the speed or velocity down. Another way you can do this is just pretty much by inspection on a ruler, see how high it actually bounces. You take a ball out of the can, you start here at the top, does it go about two-thirds the way up? Probably a pretty good ball. If you've got something that's not reaching halfway, you probably should use it for practice or throw it out. Or I guess they've got some things where you can cut them in half and put them on the bottoms of chairs and tables. All right, now a little bit more about the coefficient of restitution, and later in this segment I will have some of the equations, but if you simply think about the ball, once I release the ball, it falls, it loses potential energy, in this case the mass times gravity times height, and as it loses its potential energy, it's quickly gaining kinetic energy, until at the point of impact, it has lost all of its potential energy, it has gained the maximum kinetic energy. So in their calculation of coefficient of restitution, they're simply saying take the mass times gravity times height, the potential energy, and equate it with the one-half mass times velocity squared of kinetic energy. So all potential energy, all kinetic energy. MGH equals one-half mv squared, take the square root, meaning you're going to solve for v, a little bit of algebra, v equals square root gravity times the height. Masses cancel out. So that's where you would get your velocity value. And like I said, it will be the velocity of the speed or, or velocity upward versus the velocity or speed downward. So that's the coefficient of restitution. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the, whoops, about the tennis ball. What about the tennis ball? You hit the tennis ball, here's my racket, I hit the tennis ball and I want to get it into the opponent's court. If I hit the ball too hard, it goes across the baseline. If I put some spin on the ball, I can probably hit the ball just about as hard as I want, all right? Meaning you can really wail away at the ball if you put some top spin on the ball. So in the next segment, we're going to talk about the spinning tennis ball. I'll see you then. Take care.